Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video today. Today we're going to be using this cute little stamp set from the Rabbit Hole Designs. This is called Clarence Good Egg. Um, there's quite a few of these in the shop over there and they're all pretty adorable. I thought that this one would be kind of a fun Easter card to do. Um, I did cut a mask for it and then I ended up doing some fussy cutting. I don't even really know where I was at. The only thing that I knew is that I wanted to color the paint in rainbow colors. It was pretty much all that I knew. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp this and then um, kind of start building my little scene because I thought it was going to be a one layer card but then I didn't do it as a one layer card. I'm not really sure. Uh, and sometimes you just got to roll with it. So originally I thought I was only going to need to cut off the bottom portion so that I could do some ink blending with the grasses. You're going to see, even though I have made probably hundreds of scene cards, this one doesn't really start off that great. So when you're sitting there and you're making your cards and you're thinking this is not coming together the way that I want it to, please know that you're not alone. Some of us still have no idea what we're doing even after we've done it a thousand times. So I again, I'm just cutting off the bottom portion because I thought that was all that I was going to need um but then totally did not end up being what happened so there's a couple of these um little clarence stamps they're i believe they are based on um my friend lydia fiedler's little visitor that she's named clarence and he comes and or she i think it ended up being i think she named him clarence and then it ended up being a girl um but anyway, comes right up to her house. She pets them, feeds them. It's pretty adorable. She shares videos on Facebook. And she probably talks about them in her videos if I ever had time to watch anybody else's videos. Please excuse my sniffles as it is springtime in full bloom today. Not always every day here in Ohio, but today it is. So I stamped this down in some Copic Safe markers. And then I went to put my masks on and... Um, Originally, I was just putting on the top one so that I could do the grass blending below. And then I realized that that was going to be problematic because it just ended, the, the, um, the mass just ended in a square. So now I was like, well, I will uh, make my own grasses, like my own just general mask with two little other pieces and you can see it looks like poor Clarence is sitting on like this little hill, but it's going to look more like a cliff here in a second because the hill is going to come off of his leg and then there's going to be nothing behind it. So I'm using these um, itty bitty blending brushes. I do like them. Um, I do like them for different techniques. So I have the bigger ones that probably cover more area. But it's much harder to do techniques like you're going to see that I'm going to do with the sky. These smaller ones are really great for that. So um, I did the Twisted Citron and then I went back in with some mowed lawn. I am going to do a little Copic technique over top of that. Um, especially once I have to fix the background. Like I'm going to use it to kind of blend those two things together since they straight up do not make sense like the <laughs> the ground and the sky coming together just don't it doesn't make any sense and you'll see it when we take the masks off um i think that probably when i made this um it was probably like two o'clock in the morning on a night that i had to, was home but had to stay up uh, so i could sleep in the next day for work um and maybe you know my thought process just was not fully there um not not really sure how this happened and it's so easy to like Monday morning quarterback it when I watch it back like why didn't I realize that that was going to do that but sometimes you just don't and it's okay so I'm removing the masks here and you're going to see this gigantic cliff that he is sitting on um and how it just looks funny like he's just sitting on the edge of this cliff that has a straight edge what why why Kelly why so I'm going to put the little feet on and then I'm going to do the sky and then I'm going to figure out that I need to fix the cliff situation. For the technique that I did with the sky, um, basically I wanted it to look like it was a nice kind of 
partially cloudy day. Like, just big fluffy clouds that are in the sky. Not like there's any weather. Um, and so I had a little bit of trouble with my mask sticking because the Distress Ink was still wet. Um, that's pretty normal. You know, with all the moisture that's down there, sometimes the masking tape has a hard time sticking. But I figured out a way to make it work. For this technique, I'm going to do um, some tumbled glass first. Another really good color for this would be speckled egg. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of randomly put that down. I knew that I wanted there to be a very clear delineation near my um, hill. Like if there's no color there, then there's nothing to give the grass kind of any shape. So I'm going to kind of concentrate pretty heavily around Clarence and around the grasses. And then I'm going to do kind of like some diagonals um, with my lightest color. I'm going to go around the edges and then do some just diagonals across the sky, kind of like how clouds would, because I can't put down the, I guess, how do, how do I explain this? I can't put down the clouds. So I have to put down the negative area around the clouds. Um, and so I just kind of wanted it to be really soft and, um, you know, kind of like blend the light blue blend into the white to create the look of these clouds. Um, and so that's what I've, I'm doing here. Then I'm going to come back in with this is prize ribbon, which is a little bit of a darker blue. And I'm going to concentrate that in the middle section of the tumbled glass. So wherever I've put the tumbled glass, I'm going to let that be the outermost edge. And then I'm going to put the prize ribbon right in the center. And it's going to give this look of kind of this movement across the sky of these clouds that would be moving. Um, and so it's kind of hard to see. Here's where I realize that this, this green drop off cliff hill thing is not going to work. And so I cut myself kind of another little hillside and you don't want the positive piece. You want the negative. Um, if you're fixing a boo-boo like this one, um, because I need to block off the sky and I just need to fill in the area below it. Um, it is going to be a slightly different color because I already have the blue down there. So it's going to be a little bit darker, which is not a big deal because anything that's darker kind of looks further away. Um, this is another thing those little bitty blending brushes are good for because I need to get just in this small space um, to fix my error. And I didn't really have any issues with like any of it um, kind of overlapping my masks. So it does look a little bit darker. It does look um, a little bit different. But like I said, I'm going to try to blend that in with some um, Copic skills here. So at least the light, like the ground looks a little bit more even now, which I can deal with. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some shadows with my Copic markers. And then after I add the shadows, I'm going to add in some grasses by doing um, the flicking technique. And what's that going to do? It's going to distract from these very general shapes that I have going on here that maybe don't look like they go together. Um, the, the grass that we're going to create is going to um, be a little bit of a distraction, a little bit of a cover up um, so that you can't really see how wonky this looks in real life. <laughs> and I'm making sure um, to create kind of like a clear uh, marker between the two, the background hill and the front, um, the foreground. And then I'm not taking the darkest grasses up by where this egg is. I'm kind of leaving those grasses a little bit lighter. Um, and then around the edges of the card, like the closer to the bottoms, I will do um, more of the darker color. And this kind of just gives it a little highlight right where he's sitting. And you can see as we use progressively darker colors, how this is kind of going to come together. I did not do the um, the grasses technique on the hill in the background, because if it was further away, you wouldn't be able to see all of the details, such as individual blades of grass, which is kind of like what we're creating here. 
I just really used my markers to, like I said, kind of define that area to be in the background. And then I just followed the cues of the stamp um, as far as adding, you know, darker shading um, to the lines where the illustrator already drew them, um, where his like feet are kind of sinking into the ground or underneath the uh, paint pot. I had to think about how to say it because I couldn't, my brain couldn't make them go together. Um, so like those areas would be darker. You can see that I ink blended and right over Clarence. Like I just ink blended right over him, even though I did the masks. Um, I ended up cutting him out. It's not like I fussy cut him. I certainly could have masked him and made it a, a complete one layer card. But like I said, apparently on this particular night, my brain was not feeling making a scene card. Uh, ultimately, at the end of it, it did all come together. Um, but it was, I guess, it was a little bit of a struggle to get there. So this is my darkest color. And you can see that I'm just adding it to um, the edges uh, so that we can keep that nice highlight. You can, if you're interested in making it more blended, you can go back in with each individual color um, and go back over all of those blades of grass. Um, I did not do that. I just went over the shadows to make sure that those were more blended. But I didn't redo the grass. I just left it kind of be what it is. I felt like that was enough of an distraction from what I wanted uh, to take away from in the background. So now I'm going to stamp Clarence again. And I'm still stamping in um, Copic Safe Ink. I'm pretty sure the one I'm using is the intense intensified one or the other i have both of them black from hero arts um which is one of my go-to and then for coloring him lydia's clarence is like a grayish brown and so i kind of wanted to do that and play with a little bit of color so i started with the browns and i'm going in and adding my shadows this is how i prefer to color is adding the darkest colors to the lightest and then the lightest to the darkest. And even though I'm mixing color families here, that's still gonna be true for me. So I'm, I'm gonna add in my shadows starting with, did I say darkest to lightest, lightest to darkest? That's backwards, what am I even talking about? Apparently my brain's not working today either. I start with my lightest color, move out to my darkest and my darkest back to my lightest. I bet you there's a probably a bunch of you who typically watch my channels who are like, what did she just say? Is she on drugs? I'm not on drugs. I'm possibly sleep deprived. Um, because I cannot, I just cannot get good sleep. Here's why. Because I'm a night shift person. And so then on the days that I'm off and I'm home and I'm sleeping in bed with my new baby in her bassinet and my husband in the bed and I'm used to sleeping during the day with no people and no noise. Um, I literally cannot fall asleep y'all. It's awful. It is so terrible. Um, and today, um, Peanut and Caitlin are, are both home, uh, because it is Good Friday and he didn't have school. She, her daycare was closed. Um, and so my mom helped me out with watching her because um, nanas and grandmas are the best. And um, so that I could do some other things, get some other things done. And I ended up like I had to take a nap. I had to because last night I got two hours and I think it was like 43 minutes of sleep. And so I had to take a nap to be able to survive the rest of my life because they keep me up at night. It's terrible. Anyway, back to the coloring. So. Once I had all of the browns in, um, I, and this was really just to kind of combine the colors to get Clarence's coloring right, or the way that I saw it in my head, I'm going to go back in with then my grays, and I'm going to go right over top of those browns um, so that they blend together, you know, um, pretty seamlessly. Now, how I chose my colors is I knew that I wanted browns, you know, that were going to be kind of in the middle of the road that they weren't going to be super warm like maybe a 50 family or a 25 but they weren't going to be so cool that they're like in the 70 family so I tried to find one in the middle the 40 family seemed to work for what I wanted it to 
Um, I certainly, instead of using the cool grays, I could have went in with the warm grays, but I didn't really feel like that matched his coloring after looking at the videos and stuff. And since I had something specific in my mind of the way that it should look, that's why I did it the way that I did. Uh, but you certainly wouldn't have to. He could just be a brown squirrel or just be a gray squirrel. Or if you're interested in seeing how colors work together, he could be whatever this, um, what do I want? The, the where the mush thing is together and then they make this new thing. You mush them, whatever. I don't know, guys. It's not happening today. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's what I did there. And then for the um, rainbow, you've heard me say this before if you watch my videos, for any time you're blending two color families together, it's the second number that counts. That's the one that you want to look at. So I chose like a YO2, um, a GO3, two and three are relatively close to each other. Uh, for my, I chose a YGO3 and then like a BO2. Um, and so that way you're looking at those last numbers to see if they'll blend together. The Ys are tricky. The yellows are tricky because sometimes you have to go with a higher number in the yellows to get them to blend with the other colors just because the Ys are so um, transparent. Like they don't carry a lot of pigment. Um, but yeah, anyway. So as far as story time goes, obviously it's Good Friday. It's Easter weekend. Um, and if you are a person who's like, I don't really like cutesy Easter cards, this card may not be for you. I'll have a more traditional one up uh, tomorrow. So you can head back for that if that's maybe more of something you're interested in. Um, but so I do have to work this weekend. And it's rough. This, this particular, um, I think I explained this to you guys back when we picked schedules at the beginning of the year that you just you select your platoon and then whatever holidays that you have um like whatever your normal days off are that's the holidays you have off and there's really no taking them outside of that because um here I did go back in I think this is an E50 I went back in with because it just was not warm enough for me. I pictured him a little bit warmer. And then, so rather than redoing all of my coloring, I just took a warmer color and went over everything. And that did work for me. I was happy with the way that that looked. Um, but anyway, so I barely have any holidays off this year. Um, and then your most senior people, typically you're allowed to have two people off per shift. And so like Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, my shift works this year. So the two most senior people on my shift, when they picked their um, like vacation and holidays, they picked those two days so that everybody else on the shift was blocked. Um, and that's just kind of the way it goes. So I do have to work tomorrow. Fortunately, my family is pretty used to it. And so they're, you know, we basically just find a workaround um, so that we can still get together and celebrate the things. So Sunday morning, which is a bit of a bummer, Eric's parents came over last night to give their kids their Easter baskets because I don't have Nathan. Um, tomorrow, I have him on Sunday, but it's only for like in the evening. And unfortunately, I have to go into work, so I'll only get to see him a couple of hours on Easter. Um, so they came over yesterday to give the kids their baskets, which was super nice. And then... Um, Eric is going to take Caitlin Sunday morning to go see them uh, while I am sleeping. And then for a sh very short amount of time, like two hours, three, two and a half hours, um, I will go to my family's side of the house because it's, I mean, basically because it's closer um, to have dinner and stuff. And then I will leave for work from there. It's kind of a bummer, um, but that's also like this is the profession that I chose, so kind of comes with the territory. Um, so back to the card real quick. Here's where we're blending these colors together. Uh, I just arbitrarily picked where I was putting them. Like I just started with the pink and then started putting it down um, so that I could kind of blend them all together. I really liked the way that this came out, these little soft pastels. Um, 
the soft pastel rainbow for the green after I put it down I did have to go back over it with a yellow to get them to blend together and sometimes you do have to play with it and layer a little bit of color to make it work um and then for the purple and the pink it was the same thing like I had to go back in with the pink to blend those two in together um but outside of like those little snafus um they really did blend together quite well uh and it might just be because it was in such a small area um because it's easier to blend in small areas it always is as long as you have good control over how much ink you're putting down the color blending basically does itself um so yeah so those are our, our plans for the weekend um and then you know he goes back to school as normal on monday they only have off today because our spring break was the week before last um but we're almost to the end of the school year if you can even believe it we've got pretty much like a month like two months to go I can't it's crazy to me um but our whole our whole life is just wild right now there's so many things that you know we're just we're just trying to stay afloat on so hopefully we'll be able to get into a new routine here shortly um because there's only you know everything is always different when you have a new baby but like I told you before we have not had a consistent schedule at all whatsoever so now that all the coloring is done I'm gonna go back in um, and then do the outline because I just like a bold black outline this is not necessary by any means um, it's just something that I prefer and then I'm also gonna add some white highlights with my gel pen again just because it gives it a little bit more character um, and then I am going to fussy cut this out I'm sure that they probably have dyes because everybody has dyes now but I just didn't purchase them um, so if you were interested in doing that um, that would also be an option if you're doing the fussy cutting a uh, couple of tips that I typically give for fussy cutting hold your project in your non-dominant hand hold your scissors in your dominant hand use your non-dominant hand so for me that's my left to turn the paper keep your scissors straight it'll give you much cleaner edges so keep it straight don't turn the paper or don't turn the scissors turn the paper and then you can also go in like I am here with a non-alcohol you want a water-based marker for this a water-based marker and go in and um, go around the edges which will also give you a more finished look you don't want an alcohol based marker because it'll bleed into your coloring here I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp my sentiment um, which matches the name of the set it says you are a good egg I thought that it was super cute now that like you can see the scene all together you can really see like how those negative space clouds are really popping out um, and while I don't love the grasses I do love that sky I'm probably gonna have to try to do that again because I think it's really pretty here I've got Clarence all trimmed out just going to glue him down flat I toyed with popping him up but those little skinny legs man I couldn't do it um, just was not was not gonna be for me so I'm gonna put him down in all his little colored glory I did go in and find some Copic uh, markers to match to fill in those two white spaces inside his arm and inside his leg um, so I just filled those in really quick and then uh, I added some shimmer just to the paint portion on him and all in all I was pretty happy with the way he came out even though that scene like the background isn't my best but it's the best I could do that day and I'm gonna take it as a win so thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video bye